It's the big boy shits, man. <laughs> Can't even for big boy shit before the podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's Buff Geek here. Hopefully I can talk in this episode joined by... <laughs> what up, guys? It's David, and I should as hell can't right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. I don't know if I've left that bit at the start or not, but uh, it's pretty funny either way. Jobby jokes. Jobby jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag jobby <laughs> jokes. <laughs> okay, so we went... So we just we just did a podcast so there. Just did a wee podcast there. It was uh, on the... Uh, X-Men vs. Avengers graphic novel. And it was and about 40 minutes longer than I expected it to be. It was a lot longer than we planned. Yes. And somehow we ended up going almost page for page through the actual fucking story. Um, so that's definitely a companion episode. Yes. The next graphic novel we cover is going to be um, much shorter in terms of synopsis and then we're just going to riff. So we kind of we kind of riffed all the way through it but talked about it in long form yeah so it'll be interesting to get your feedback as to what version you're going to think is better and the little hook that i put on the last episode in case you weren't going to listen to this one and now you are was that um you know that scene when captain america is about to pick up mjolnir but he can't move it but he moves it but he can't lift it yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. what did i say did i say civil war uh, I don't know what you said actually. I could have said I anything. Think, yeah. I'm not even sure anymore. No. It's because it's Wednesdays. Wednesdays, man. Wednesdays. Anyway, so that everyone knows that scene and we were talking about it in the last podcast and there's a theory for uh, the reason why Cap wasn't worthy. Do you want to hear the theory? Go for it. I might even have to write it as an article. Mm. Ooh. Sounds good. Pan article. Well, basically the theory goes that the reason Captain America could budget but not lift it, even though he is the whitest knight. He is he's a better man than Thor, surely, right? Yeah, he doesn't smash people's cutlery and shout more. Exactly. Yeah. That's not polite. No, that's, that's just <sighs> fucking rude. But he does he does lie to his best friend about the death of his parents. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So the idea is that uh, Steve knew that Bucky had killed Cap's pa- uh, blue, Iron Man's parents. Awesome. Well, I, I looked into it and he apparently the timeline works that he would have. How did he find out? I but thought I he can't... found out in Civil War. No, because in Civil War he's like, he, 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 because Cap said, uh, blah, Iron Man says to Cap, did you know? And Cap's like, yeah, uh, yeah, kind of Yeah, but he, I'm sure he figures it out in the film. No, I think he knew about it previous. Okay. I think that was part of the files that were deleted from Shield slash Hydra. Right. Okay. But I I could be a little bit wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But that's the theory, um, as to why he couldn't lift it. So now, he could lift it because that was the only thing that was stopping him from being, um, a righteous man. Yeah. So, I'm expecting Cap to be able to pick up Mjolnir this time. And use it. Ah, uh, okay. And Winter Soldier happens before Age of Ultron, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so what they're saying here is the answer lies in the previous movie, Winter Soldier, when Black Widow and Cap confront Arnim Zola. Yeah. Um, and he says, how Hy- the new Hydra grew a beautiful parasite inside S.H.I.E.L.D. for 70 years. Hydra has been secret, blah, 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 blah. And when history did not cooperate, history was changed. Oh, right, you see there. There's a, it's talking about assassination of Howard Stark, and then you see another picture, mm. and you see Winter Soldier. I think accidents. Yeah. Howard and Maria Stark. So there we go. So he looks like Tony Stark from the cartoon, doesn't he? The the guy that plays his dad. Uh, Dominic Cooper is it? And there, in that that scene, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so that was that's the hook. That is the hook. But we're not talking about Avengers and X-Men. Well, we we might be a little bit... No, we're not today, actually. Not no, at all. Not in Nothing. At all. No, what we are talking about is movie news today. So we're going to cross to the other franchise uh, to start with. For DC, I'm just trying to segue. Oh, okay. You do the segue. Start, <laughs> start speaking. Start speaking. So, Patty Jenkins has finally closed out. I um, <laughs> almost read this as a record deal. Like from Simon Cowell, you know, <laughs> for an album. It's closed a record deal 
to direct Wonder Woman 2 and it will make her the highest paid female female filmmaker in history. We can't talk tonight, can we? No, I'm f- female filmmaker fucked. <laughs> female fucked. Um, right, okay, so... Married. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, Patty Jenkins <sighs> becoming the highest paid female filmmaker in history. Now, what do I think of that? I think that I don't know enough female filmmakers to this comment the, on that. Yeah, this is the thing. I mean, they're making such a fuss about her being a female filmmaker and such a high but whatever. It, but no one else has made such a fuss about other female filmmakers, whether they've made good films or not, to the point you don't know. Well, she did make yeah. Monster, which is very good. Right, I've never seen it. That was Charlie's Theron. Was very good. Christina Richards? Yes, it was, yeah, yeah. Or Ricky or her Ricky. Um... But I'm not. I'm not the best with with directors and such. Mm. Your brother would have been yeah. quality for this. If it was Tarantino. Ah, no, 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 no. I was trying to give him some actual real props there. Shout out to oh, Ian. Wendon. Big love, no, big no. love. Missing him. Um, stop spending all your time in Glasgow. Getting your nut and boob squeezes. <laughs> Just come, come to Perth for the boys sometimes. You know. We've got boobs you can squeeze. Do we? Yeah. Well. Well, we've got the strippers next door for when we finish. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's and, what we do every week. And Bravo Towers next to Alpha Towers. <laughs> exactly. Um, Bravo! So I can't really Bravo. comment on that, but I am kind of fed up hearing about she's the best female filmmaker. She's a filmmaker. So, well, can't she just be... So, but, but, so she's the best of a subsection of filmmakers? No, that's what's like. But it's not like, the best filmmaker? Yeah, it's like she's not, she's not quite, she's not quite a guy, So, you know? when you say she's the best female filmmaker, does that, that kind of... Fires in the face of the whole inclusion thing. Doesn't it just, right? Mm-hmm. Can't, it should just be the best filmmaker, or should one of the highest paid filmmakers. Should be for her, you know? Let's, but it's let's gotta be, going. it's gotta be about that, and, um, the thing is, Wonder Woman was pretty darn good. And I think it was even better because it wasn't shit. It was good because it wasn't shit. In terms of, I went in Compared there thinking. To Batman versus Superman, I went yeah. in there thinking it could have sucked ass. Like Batman versus no, Superman. No, like Suicide Squad. Yeah. And it was actually pretty good. Unlike Batman. Which made it Superman. better. But and I went Batman into Guardians. Superman. Shut up. I went into Guardians <laughs> hoping for yeah. a repeat of Guardians. Yep. Yeah. And what we got was them trying to repeat Guardians as opposed to doing a good job of it. And still better than Batman vs Superman. Nope. Nope. No. <sighs> Razzy Magnet. Oh my gosh. We're going to fight so hard over the DCEU <laughs> stuff. Um, so yeah, I find it hard, like, I'm sure there's other films that have been directed by women that are better than Wonder Woman too, and now she's getting mega, mega bucks. Sorry, the Wonder Woman. She's going to get mega bucks from Wonder Woman too. Mm. So I, I kind of feel like it's, it's like a, a participation trophy. In a way, or like a... It's a marketing thing, almost. Yes. We, you can tr- hopefully get more women behind you by saying, like, rah, 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 women. Yeah. You know? How I, about just, well done, Patty. Make a great film. Move on. Yeah. I know, and it's, it's good for her. And, you know, and pay her properly anyone. this time, because obviously she was brought in on a shitty fucking yeah. wage. Same with Gal Gadot. And now this time you pay her properly, just as you would with any film that, like... But it's just as you would with Dare, uh, Deadpool. Yeah, or like John Favreau got back for Iron Man 2. I don't, so good on him at the time and things like that. I don't need to hear about this is the best male something, something, something. Yeah, like, so he, he's the best male who starred in Friends Do you know what I never hear? This is, this is, yeah, exactly. This is the best white male something. Yes. You will never hear that. And maybe I need to hear that and then I'll be like, oh, good. Now that's inclusive. Because everyone else has got their own special fucking snowflake going on. But otherwise, no. I'm sick of hearing about female filmmakers, black filmmakers, this She's filmmaker, just as good that as filmmaker. Any male filmmaker. They're maker. just filmmakers. Yeah. You know, why can't... And you highlighting it That's your to be more inclusive filmmaker. means that you're actually being uninclusive. Divisive, yes. Divisive, yeah. So, well done, Patty, for making that money mm-hmm. and finally making the big, big... You know uh, what's the word move for your superhero box because mm-hmm. that's where the big money is now. Yeah. Um. Not to say I'm not saying that she was probably poor before or anything. I'm just saying like she's finally going to get the real money she probably nah, deserves. that industry is a rich man's game. And she's also getting the uh, a rich woman's a rich person's game. Sorry, I'm fucking mm-hmm. doing it as well. Yeah. Eh? Uh, she's also going to get something on the back end, so to speak. <laughs> Whoever. <laughs> Whoever. <laughs> 
which will Hell be for a, that money, I'd take something on the back end. And indeed, which will be a percentage of the film's gross because she would have said to them, "Well, my film is the highest grossing." Well, obviously, it's the highest grossing female superhero film of all time because there's only one. But you've got to say that mm-hmm. it's it's the highest grossing film superhero film for the DCU. Do you think Wonder Woman will spur them on to make a Black Widow one? No. No. No, because I don't think I don't think Marvel are reactionary like that, right. and I also think they've got a plan. Yeah, this is true. That would just be kind of like, oh, let's just do this and, and interject it here. Scarlett Johansson pulled in four hundred and fifty million plus for Lucy, a no-name film which is really bad, and then only made, I think it was less than 100 mil for Ghost in the Shell. Ouch. So she's not reliable, and her new comedy didn't make any money either. I do think, I do worry that, I don't think Wonder Woman 2 is going to be as good because I'm going there expecting it to be good. Yes. And it might not have, it might, you know what I mean? I've, I've got it a different shape like Batman versus Superman. <sighs> I've got a different standard for it now. They made a really good one. Uh, anyway, you know, just well done, Patty Jenkins. Yes, you know when you're saying how Ghost in the Shell didn't even make a hundred million. The I could be office. wrong with that. You know, it did make over a hundred million worldwide. Oh yes, it did. That's an excellent segue. So thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, <laughs> it movie hashtag it movie hashtag Stephen King's tip. Yes, Stephen King's Tit has the largest opening weekend for any horror movie of all time and made almost 190 million worldwide. Which is pretty good by any standards, but when you think the budget for this film was, what, 37 million? Th- 35 million, 35 I think it was. million. Yep. Um, so and I, I, I believe uh, there's an article on the website, the website being the com that talks about. Um, well, it reviews the the film, but it's, oh, yeah, it's kind of non. It. It's kind of not too spoilery because Kev was trying to be, and I couldn't read it until I watched the film. Right, right. I, I, I'm the same. I'm not going to read it yet. Yeah, so it's not too spoilery. So you can go ahead and read that probably, and obviously, if you've seen the film, you can definitely go ahead and read it. And he's got some interesting points, some good points there. Um, I'm a person now. I was kind of hoping that we could get your brother for this, but it's not going to happen because he just texted me there and said he's only free Monday. But bum. Um, hopefully one of the rest of us has watched the other It movie uh, slash but the, it, the other It movie is actually a TV series mm-hmm, that yes. was turned into a movie but hardly anyone knows that it was a two-parter wasn't it yeah so I was hoping that we could speak with someone that has seen both because I've only seen the new one and Kev says the new one is better if you've only seen that one which is interesting yeah it would be though well not necessarily well, no, it, it can't be worse than one you've not seen. No, it's <laughs> it's better if you've not if you've not seen the first one. If right, you've okay. seen the first one, you might not like this one as much. Right, okay. Did I say that wrong? I, I'm so confused. I'm not sure anymore. Anyway, hopefully you guys understand, because you guys are smart, <laughs> not like us who are, well, it's coming close to the midnight. Yes. So, um... I've been up since 6 a.m. Ouch, 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 ouch. Um, do you notice I put the, the link... For the website in there with the description. Uh, yeah, I'm working yeah. on that, yeah. I'm getting <laughs> getting good. Um, so I went to see it last night and the cinema was fucking packed. Yeah. Now, there was girls there that were fucking screaming and giggling at the way far other side and I was going to fucking honestly kill them because there's so much fucking chatting. But anyway, I, as, soon as, as soon as we can watch cinema releases at home, mm-hmm. you know how we were talking about that recently, yeah. I will not go to the cinema anymore. I fucking hate it. My knees hurt. Other people queuing anything like that bullshit yeah. hate it but aside from that the film was without being a spoiler pretty pretty decent i've not heard much bad it's not it. it's definitely not bad and it's definitely not but it's definitely i think it's maybe overhyped right and for someone that's watched that's lived through the 80s and watched Stranger Things and watched a couple other shows that have harkened back to the 80s recently, like, mm-hmm. um, you know that fucking Suicide one that was on Netflix? I can't remember what the fuck it was. I started watching 13 it. Reasons Why? Maybe it was that. The one where the girl kills herself at the start and yeah, yeah, the yeah. boys like, I think. Well, I, do you know, I, I watched a good half of it, maybe more, and I couldn't feel sorry for her because right. she was like, at, this, at the point I stopped watching it, someone had 
called her a name and someone made fun of her and someone said she was a slut and someone said somebody else and I was like that's fucking nothing that's like a day in, at high school yeah but put you put yourself in the mind of a, a teenager but and I was a everything, teenager everything's so intense when you're but a teenager but I was a teenager though. and that happened to me and everyone else hmm. and it wasn't a big fucking deal yeah so I was like boo hoo it's not like really bad shit happened to you maybe it does later on I don't know yeah. anyway I kind of felt like the 80s flavours played out a little bit Hmm. Everyone's kind of because people. It's why we've been saying about all these remakes like Transformers and you know Charlie Hunnam's He Man and things like that. It's like the the people who grew up watching the same stuff as us. Huh? They are now the ones making the films. Yeah. And they're like, I want to be nostalgic. I want to go back to what I enjoyed. And fair play, and you know, it's not bad, but just means in the next. Been- Generation it'll be nineties remakes. Yes, it will be. Which is still gonna still gonna vibe for me, Mm -hmm. but not as much. It's just gonna be like a thirty year loop, thirty year cycle. That's pretty much what it is, Mm -hmm. and it'll. But do you think in thirty years' time your kids will do eighties style remakes of eighties remakes from the eighties? No, they'll be making remakes. Yeah, they might be doing remakes of remakes, but they'll be doing remakes of cut modern films as well. Apart from the superheroes genre, I think that's probably got a, a wider timeline on it. Yeah, I think superheroes can pretty much just continue on for a really long period of time with all the stories they've got, plus also doing like Elseworlds stuff like The Joker. Yeah. But anyway, that movie is pretty darn good. I liked seeing it. It was quite a nice feeling with the cinema when it feels full and everyone's there and, and, and it's exciting. I think it's going to make a fucking ton of money this weekend. Yeah. In fact, if it made 190 worldwide, I think it's going to make... 100 million this weekend if not more which is you're usually looking at a 60% drop after the first week right okay Um, sometimes a really good week is 50 and a fantastic one is 40 so I think it's going to make another 100 million comfortably Mm -hmm. which means that it'll almost have made so it it costs 35 million and it'll make it'll be at about 300 million within the second week I think so what's that? Ten Almost times? ten times, yeah. It's just crazy. It's brilliant, right? Yeah. And I hope someone had a deal on the back end for that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hopefully we'll be able to review it next week. Yep. It movie. If you manage to watch it. I won't get to watch it in time. Cool. I'll maybe do it myself then. I'll speak to Steve. And see if he can do a different night. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I can do that. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's not like I can do it during the day. No, not with all the noise anyway. No. Um, what else have we got in the, the lineup? Star Wars has been in the news a lot recently, hasn't it? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, it does. What the fuck was that? I don't know. <laughs> I think I orgasmed a little bit. <laughs> Somebody mentioned <Yeah>. Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Star Wars, <laughs> they were talking about maybe the director's going to change at the start of the week and then suddenly fucking J.J. Abrams is back, now the director of episode 9. Isn't that a bit conflicting? Well... Because he's a Trekkie person. Okay, well you're not a Star Wars guy, so we're going to have to do a little bit of... a little bit of show and tell. I am not showing you mine. Okay. I'll show you mine. And I'll tell you about it. Boom! And there it is. <laughs> That's why I don't have a red car. Big red penis Ferrari shaped car. <laughs> I got the guns and I got this. Call it the Magnum. <laughs> <laughs> and what about your right foot? Is it the same as this left foot? Yes. Okay, cool. So, J.J. <sighs> Abrams directed episode 7, The Force Awakens. Okay. Okay. But you are correct. He did do the Star Trek. Did you know he did Force Awakens? No. No, you didn't. I didn't think did you did. I probably... No. I and he left... The Force Awake. He, he left uh, and wasn't going to do see, uh, episode 8, season 8, episode 8. And they've actually had a whole bunch of problems with just about every other director that they've had. Right. Also, the Han Solo directors got kicked off halfway through the making of the film. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, everyone knows all the problems, right? Everything's so disruptive at the moment, isn't it? Not in the Marvel Universe. So... <sighs> Because they've got Kevin Feige holding it all together. Kevin Feige's the fucking boy, like. J.J. Uh, Abrams is going to direct episode 9. And I'm kind of thinking... <sighs> I wrote about this on the, 
the website earlier and the link will be there and it's not up yet because uh, there's a little uh, text issue i don't know what it is but anyway it'll be it'll be up by the time you it'll be up by the time you're listening to this so you can go to it and i'll link it in the description so all this technical stuff that you i just, just mentioned is not important so i so yeah just yeah so anyway. what's the website the buff geek podcast blog.wordpress.com cool. yes it is um i'm just gonna go back to the notes real quick uh, I'm pressing. Yep, I know. I know. I just I want, uh, I want it a certain way so I can see everything. Uh, um, yeah, I've got a problem with JJ Abrams being the director for the episode nine, and the problem I have is that he's good at concepts, but he's not good at execution, as and he's not a good finisher. Oh, okay. Okay, so he's okay. So at execution. he's kind of like the people's elbow. Yes. It's a terrible finisher. It is. However, it's done with style. It is. I was upset every time Triple H lost the fucking thing in 2000. <laughs> but it is done with style. Yes. So, for me as a big Star Wars fan, I'm like, I don't want J.J. Abrams back. I was hoping... I, I, I've got actually an article I'm going to write about the top three directors that I want to be. Matthew Vaughn. Nope. <laughs> um, That I wanted to direct episode nine. Ridley I'm going to write that up. Nope. James Cameron. Nope. Steven Spielberg. Nope. I'm so stuck Stop in the talking. 90s. <laughs> you are so stuck in the 90s. <laughs> you can tell our age, eh? Um, yeah, so I'm not digging J.J. Abrams. I don't think he's the right fit for it, but maybe he'll do okay. Maybe episode 8 will change your mind. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know, because I thought The Force Awakens was... was, was, it, was it was like Wonder but, Woman in a way, in terms of they didn't fuck it. So it was better, and then the more I've thought about it, I was like, hmm. And then Rogue One was far superior in every way. But that's for our, that, you not being a massive Star Wars fan, how do you feel about this? Yeah. I hear the name J.J. Abrams, and I'm just like, well, he's, he's quite high profile, you know, he's he must be good. Someone I was listening to, I'm not quite sure who, because like, I listen to a lot of different podcasts and reviewers and stuff like that. Part said, of our Podern family. Yes was saying that J.J. Abrams is really good at imitating other people's style <laughs> of of uh, d- directing. And I was like, hmm. And he never elaborated on it, but I wonder if the guy's correct. And if so, because I'm, I'm not the best with directors. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if someone could say like, oh yeah, he directs in this style for this movie and this style for that movie. I'd love to hear that, Ian. Hook us up. And also, episode nine, as we moved back from May to December 2019. Now, how does that sit with you? Don't give a fuck, do you? <laughs> it's Star Wars is a Christmas film. It's like Die Hard. Yeah. Well, you know, when the TV shit, there's usually a Star Wars on someplace that you can put on and then change the channel again. Oh, okay. Well, go watch like reruns of Generation Game or something more exciting. You are a cunt. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> nerd rage is fucking rife right now. <laughs> right. So most of the Star Wars films have been released in May. And then they started releasing them in December as they made this kind of return for since yeah. 2015. And I think it's better at Christmas time. Yeah. And there's also an article on the website about that. There we go. I've written a lot of articles recently. Good. Yeah. Sorry, okay. <laughs> no, well, they are good though. <clears throat> well I have to say that. I can't I can't podcast right now because the noise outside is oh, just I not possible. I can't pick up the background noise. I like it. Yeah, see? Mm. So I was like, how can I make some content? Ah, I can do that. And but but luckily for for you and maybe you guys listening, um, I'll probably just do both now. Sweet, <laughs> all the content, more work for me, yay! But when you're really fit and healthy, you can do all the work you want. You can you can manage extremely large workloads. There you go then. Yeah, and and I manage this because I train with Alpha Fitness. And they help you handle your large load. They do indeed. If you've got a large load, you need to handle contact Alpha Fitness today. <laughs> How do I contact Alpha Fitness? Oh, well, you could just go to the aforementioned website at thebuffgeekpodcastblog.wordpress.com I love how you put that in the notes and then I've never actually read it from the notes yet. <laughs> oh, amazing, right? Um, and at the Alpha Fitness website, which is... Still not working yet because you've not fixed it. No, because I've not fixed it. Because you've not fixed it. You, you said you were going to fix it for me. Oh, okay. That was six months ago. Oh, that, that's me being over ambitious. That was seven months ago. <laughs> so just when you talk about J.J. Abrams, the first thing I heard him involved in was Lost. 
Yes. Do you know who else was in Lost? Me? Daniel Day Kim. Yes, he was. Oh, you're good at the segues tonight. <laughs> you're you're yammering away. I'm just thinking about the connections here. <laughs> oh, do you know? Do you know what? It's getting that time of night where I start to really wake up. It's getting that time of night where I should be sleeping. Yes. Okay. I get the hint. So remember that little fucking bitch Ed Screen, who yes. they were jerking off over on Collider today, saying how he did, did the most noble thing, and I'm like, fuck. Oh, it's a publicity no stunt. Balls thing, yeah. No balls publicity stunt. Fucking bullshit. Yeah. And I'm glad he's not going to be in the film. Yeah, you can hear more of our thoughts about that two podcasts ago. Two yeah. podcasts? Three podcasts? One six one. Six one. one. Yes. One six one. Yeah. No, no, I think it was earlier than that, actually. No, it was one six... No, it was. It was two weeks ago. So one six one, one six... One five nine. Right. One five nine, folks. One five nine. You can hear us we fucking slaughter him. why Ed Screen is not a hero. Yes. Maybe it were, were the jaded pessimist. He just seems to make bad choices and now he's just realising that he needs to spin them a lot better. Yeah, that's true. So basically, you know the crack with Ed Screen, he's left the Hellboy thing because he's too white or whatever and he's a great guy and bullshit, bullshit. Yeah. So, Daniel Day Kim, who was, I can't remember what his name was from Lost actually. No, right? yeah, can I? But he was fucking sweet. Uh, he was really good in it and he's in a... And is um, he not? Hawaii Five Is he not straight up really handsome? He's quite a good looking guy, yeah. It's like yeah. such a chiselled mm-hmm. features, you know? So he's in negotiations to take over Ed Screen's role, which was, do you remember? I no. can't remember the name. Answerly character, number 47. Yeah. Um, some guy, I can't remember his... Chris member. I can't remember his name, but when he gets angered or in danger, he t- turned to a, a, a panther or a lion or some shit. I don't know, I just had puffer fish in my head there. <laughs> Just when you say when he's in danger, I was like, poof. Just floats up. <laughs> just floats, floats away. <laughs> so, okay, let's look at this. Uh, Daniel Day Kim, good actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Asian, mm-hmm. to some extent. Um, he might not might not take the role, though. He might hand it, like, turn it down because he's not half Asian. Was it not half Asian or something? Was the description for the character? M- well, maybe I think he actually is half Asian, half half. Is he? Yeah, maybe so. But he, he doesn't. He, he looks. He looks kind of white. Take it, Lionsgate never got back to you. Apparently, no. No, they're not yeah. interested. I don't look Asian enough. Ah, uh, okay. Even though my dad is actually fucking Asian. He, he's fucking Asian. He's fuck yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So fuck yeah sucks. Um. <sighs> I don't know what to say about this. Like, he's a pretty good actor. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen more of him than I've seen of Ed Screen. I actually liked Ed Screen in Deadpool. I thought he was quite good as a villain. I don't know what range he's got. I didn't like him in Game of Thrones that much. He's kind of handsome. He's got kind of a square jaw and everything. Daniel Day Kim's kind of handsome. He's got quite a square jaw. They were obviously looking for a man with strong jaw. <laughs> straw jawline. Um, I got nothing here. Like, he's a good actor. Like, Cool. It's, I think it's become. But a he's also thing. Asian, yay! Yeah, it's become a bigger thing than it should be because of that. It'll be funny if he's in the film for like five fucking minutes and gets killed off. Yeah. Like he's literally like, like uh, Warpath in Days of Future Past. Is it Warpath? War, Warhammer, War. No Warpath. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Warpath. He, yeah. yeah. I forgot he was in that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Imagine that's the, that's the size of the role that was written. Yeah. And all this fucking hee haw like about Like the Dinobots and Transformers Age of Extinction yeah. when they're in it for like three minutes or something. Yeah. Fucking bullshit. Bullshit, man. Anyway, I, I, that's kind of cool, you know, whatever. Um, I hope he gets it because he just left that show he's in. Hawaii Five-0? Yeah, yeah. He he? Yeah, because he wasn't getting he wasn't getting paid the same as the other actors. Yeah. Two, two of the, no, 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 it's not a fucking racist thing. Him and someone else left because they weren't getting paid the same as two of the other main actors but I don't think he was the originally one of the main guys so it was probably the deal they made at the start and yeah, then maybe. they kind of upped it a little bit or whatever I don't know much about it but he could do with a job Yeah. Well. so Ed Screen doesn't need a job because he's rich in um, morality yes and hero worship and shit. <laughs> yes exactly I'm getting all the all the tale for being a good, good guy. Mm. So we've got a couple others here. We're going to quick, quick fire real quickly. Um, not that one. Leonardo DiCaprio apparently wants to play Stan Lee in a biopic of his life. Now, allegedly, not allegedly, but apparently Leo and Stan Lee live quite close to each other. They're neighbours. Yeah. Now, 
I don't know how you can be a neighbour of someone if you've got like a fucking 3,000 acre your lodge. I suppose the next person the next like, person two miles along. across. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like it's like people who live in the country, right? Yeah. Like, that's my neighbour. They're five miles away. Yeah. Well, it's the closest person. Or so, a cup of sugar, sir. Yeah, so I don't know how they bumped into each other. It's not like they were collecting the mail and talking yeah. or bought or like borrowed the same more. <laughs> oh, I bet that Stanley's a bit of a dog. Nah, maybe. Just, I, I actually meant a physical hedge, but after I said it, I realised, yeah, yeah, it could be, you know, Just on a side note here, each other's uh, this is a little note from Alpha Fitness, actually. Stanley didn't create the Fantastic Four until he was um, in his mid-40s. Right. So that was his first title that really, really took off, and then he obviously made all the other titles that he made. So he wasn't, he was like 42 or 43 when he finally got his big break. So if you're toiling and struggling and working on something... Don't be giving up. Excelsior. Excelsior, indeed. Anyway, back to the the buffkeep portion of the show. <laughs> what do you think about Leo playing Stan Lee? Be different. I think Stan Lee's quite a character that a lot of people could probably impersonate him and do him. But for getting to the depth of the Stan Lee behind the, you know, like behind closed doors or whatever. Yeah. I think that's where you probably need someone with a bit of range to play anyone. Nobody's like that all the time. Everyone has in real life. People have the various levels, and that's so. Yeah, it's, but he's always been the same Stan Lee, ever since the mid nineties when I knew him. Mm. He's always been like this upbeat, fucking cheerful hey guy. Hey there, true believers. Yeah, you give him a prom, and he's like, ah, everything's cool. You know, everything's cool. Um, I don't know if Leo could do the voice. Oh, I think he probably. Could. He could. Yeah, he'll work on that. That'll be his focus, if nothing else. He'll just go. Six months of vocal therapy yeah, you're and right. surgeries. Has, has Leo done the most biopics of any actor? I think he has, right? Has he? I think he has. I can only think off the top of my head of uh, Hoover or Edgar or whatever it's called. J. Edgar. J. Ed- he's done J. Edgar. Um, he's Wolf of Wall Street. I don't know if that counts. Yeah, yeah, that's that's another one. Um, the Aviator. Right. Yep. Catch me if you can. Revenant. The what? The Revenant. Is that meant to be a true story? I have no fucking clue. <laughs> the Beach. That's based, not a true story. It's based on a, is it not based on a no, true story? No, it's based on a novel by Alex Garland. Oh, fuck. Anyway, I feel like there's... Read the I was, novel several times. I love that book. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Really good. I feel like he, there's a couple other others that he's done. I feel like it was like five or six. Right. But I, I, I can't remember now. But he, he's done a lot of biopics. Mm-hmm. You know? And I, I kind of think that there's a good argument for Leo being the best actor of his generation. Yeah, I think he'd struggle to find people to... Who could you say is more argue. reliable and had a better string of films? He's had a couple of shit ones, but he's done so much. And to come out of the... Tom Hanks? Teenage heartthrob thing. Yeah. But, That's okay, true. Tom Hanks was never a teenage heartthrob. He was never no. the poster boy. And But Tom Hanks is a fucking solid performer as well. He is solid. See, so catch me if but you can. But that's not his generation. No, it's a and who's, generation. And who's better in that? Yeah, well, and catch me if you can. Who who eats up more? Fuck, man. See, well, the, that's another one. Two of them, the, the two of them playing like in the same film is just so good. I, I've watched that film so many times. Oh. I would love to see Leo opposite uh, Johnny Depp and Christian Bale. Nah. Because you don't want to waste his time. Because those those two were. He'll have learnt his lines, and John Depp will be like, "Well, then I can't hear." Those two were great. So I always wanted to see them two, the 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 the, the pairing of those three go against each other. I just like the picture. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so I think that apart from maybe not getting the voice quite right, he can't beat the talent of Leo, mm-hmm. and he's never done a comic book film. And he's going to play Stanley. That makes so much fucking sense. Yeah. Okay. The last thing here I want to talk about because we're not going to wa- we're not going to have time to watch the trailers. No. Um, no. Uh, you've have you watched the Purge movies? Yes. Have you seen all of them? Yes. Okay. So I've only seen the first one. Right. And I really like the first one. And yes. for no reason at all have I not watched the other two. Second one, very good. Right. I like it. Um, it, it it's like Mark Ruffalo is it? No, Mark Griffalo? Uh, Frank Grillo. Frank Grillo, that's it. Crossbones. Who's Mark Ruffalo? Oh yeah, that's fucking... That's Hulk. That's Hulk. So it's basically, the first one is set in the house, and it's just all in the house the entire time. 
The second one is almost like the Punisher. Yep, <laughs> it is. It's actually he's kind of like the Punisher. This that's what the second one is. Frank Grillo is almost auditioning for the Punisher in this film, um, and he's very good at it. It's a very good film. He should have been the Punisher. Uh, I I like John Bernthal. I like him as it. The third part film. John Bernthal. John Bernthal. I don't know how you say it. He's is he not a bit Hispanic? Because if we're going to be, I, mean, I, I, I think I just said closer to Italian. Like, well, I don't think Frank Castle is Italian. I think Frank Castle was like straight up Amer- American, maybe Irish American. Well, Frank Grillo has got, um, he's got an ethnic. Has he? Background as well. I think. Well, if we're going to be culturally correct, you know, like with uh, Daniel Day Kim. Yeah, you've set a you've set a precedent at screen. Yeah, you fucked the world up. You, you fucked it up, yo. Um. <sighs> Anyway, back to me, because I was talking. Sorry. Purge 3, not worth watching. Oh, really? It's got some... It touches on some great ideas, but the execution is terrible. And it's 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 almost like a teeny version of the film. Oh. It's, it's maybe worth just watching anyway to see these sort of ideas that they could explore. I think The Purge could be a great series, like, of standalone episodes not necessarily an interconnected story all the way through but like like so and so story the the purge new york the purge california not even but like just different aspects like there's things happen in the second film that you're like fuck that's really clever i'd never have thought of that like this whole thing having that kind of effect um so yeah i I quite like the second one i'll never watch the third one again but i like where you're like what you've got written here. I like this idea. Yes, well, The Purge 4 is meant to be set um, during the first Purge and is a prequel. First ever Purge. Now, I always find that funny, right? you got to kill your boss, you fuck it up, right? But anything that happens in that time is completely legal. So you go back to work on Monday, you're like, what's up, dude? <laughs> How are you, Frank? Yeah. Oh, not bad. Good weekend. Eventful. <laughs> So, what do you think about the Purge concept? Brilliant. I, it's a, not in a real life, I want it to happen. It would oh, you be, don't? No, I don't. You wouldn't train all year round for the Purge? It would be fucking terrifying. I've got, girl, I've got two kids. You know what I mean? And a wife, yeah. Yeah, well, she can be the, the bait or whatever, you know, but... <laughs> do what you want to the women, just don't hurt me. Um, but, yeah, but, um, Are you easy to hurt, like? It's like a little punch in the arm. Would that count? Me. I'll punch it back. All right, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm closer to your boss. Uh, <laughs> ball destructor. Boom. Because uh, you're usually busy sucking them. Oh. Just squeeze a bit harder. Um, there's there's a lot of great concepts they could employ in the purge stuff. So yeah, I think I I like the idea of the purge as a film. It's fiction. And there's, there's some great stuff. And they totally balls it up in the third one. Well, that's what I meant. I meant just fiction. I didn't mean because I want to do it in real life. <laughs> I'm just clarifying. Yeah, I, I do. I don't want to be on record as an advocate of purging. In the, uh, social cl- No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Can you imagine, though? It's fucking terrifying. Watch the second film. Get it watched. You'll think. Well, I'm wishing Netflix would hurry the fuck up and put it on. Was it not on Netflix before? The no, third one. The first one was. Was it the first one? I I watched that and it was a joy, an absolute joy. Mm-hmm. It'd be worse if you're a, if you're a family man because you've got to look, you've got four, three, four people you need to look after, not just one. Yeah. You know, for Which me, what's... I board up the house fuck. and then I go out raping and pillaging. Yeah, it's Lena Headey who's in the yeah, first yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's... I just damn fine in that started watching Game of Thrones with Ash this week and uh, she's with the wife this week <laughs> and uh, she says um, I, I know her face I, I want to punch her but I know her face and that'll be what it's from oh okay well that, that brings us back to the very start of our actual original conversation tonight and then we're going to wind it up so obviously we've done the Game of Thrones series you guys should check it out it covered kind of oh, 150 yes. to 160 um and we've got predictions and the whole thing in there. But you're watching series one again. Yes. And you need to pee. Yes. Okay, so series one. <laughs> watching it back with the knowledge you have now, 
of how the Game of Thrones is played and how everyone else acts, Mm -hmm. does Ned Stark fuck you off a whole bunch and you just think you are thick? Oh, yes. He's totally not even... um, It's like... um, Thingy Tarly. Sam's dad. Uh Uh-huh. Sticking to his guns even though he knows he's about to be toasted. And he's like, I don't care. I'm not bending the knee. And then Dickon's like, <laughs> me neither. This will be okay. Fucking idiot. Um, Ned's done the same. He's just man of principles, not willing to bend his principles. I've not gotten to his demise yet. I can't remember how it comes about. Obviously, I remember his head gets lobbed off, but I can't remember how it all how the betrayals come about in that. So, I mean, I'm a man of principles. I like to think, but I've never had my life be in danger, no. really. You know, yeah, at that point you'd be like, you know what? Yeah, okay, let's, B- let's bend a knee. Yeah, okay. So you could kill me here. I need to serve you now. I'm just gonna fucking do it. You know, and I'll kill you later. Me, <laughs> I'll kill them. I'll kill them all. Yeah, what, the first time I watched it, I was like, Ned Stark's the best. He's a righteous man. He, yeah, he's standing up for the good. Oh, he's dead. It was oh. good that they showed him fighting against Jamie, and basically Jamie couldn't best him as well. You know, it's like little fingers brothel. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, does 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 Jamie have a difficulty with it? I can't remember. Yes, and then someone shoots someone. That was someone it. just stabs Ned in the back of the leg with a thing. And does then Jamie stab the guy? Jamie knocks him out. He fucking hooks him. Yeah. For doing it, because he's pissed off, because obviously he wanted to beat Ned. He wanted or, the test. What's that? He wanted the test. Yes. You know. Yeah. Well, I found him really irritating to watch back, so, and yeah. every time I've watched it since I've watched season one three or four times now. Um, and he gets more annoying every time. <laughs> I like um, I like the noticing stuff now. Things are foreshadowed, or things are mentioned. So there's little right? references, and you're like, oh, I know what she's talking about. And there's just so much more to it. Isn't it? When they're when they're gobbling on about a mannequin change his face, or this thing that, or this song I oh, heard, or this person. Swear they've seen mermaids, you know, and yeah. stuff like that. And it's like, oh, the virus theory's coming back. It, 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 just shows when you go back and watch it how much how, how many it. seeds they've planted mm-hmm. you know it's just beautiful even the things like people going on about Arya going to Nymeria no that's not you and it's the exact same way she says to her dad about being a lady no that's not me or mm. that's not who I am or whatever it is you know it's just it's just little things like that and you're like brilliant and that, was it you that told me the theory about how Ned could still be alive or was, or was it Kev Said about the theory of Ned could still be alive. I think I, I think I brought that one up. I uh, think I that, could be that wrong. That was on the, the previous one. So if you want to know how Ned could still be alive, check out our previous Game of Thrones theories and predictions podcast. Yes, that would be episode one sixty. One six zero. Mhm. And that's us done for another week. Yes, because I need to pee. Because you need to pee and you need to go to sleep and it's really really late. Yes. So, where can the kids find you? So you can find me at the usual places at the Stoby. You'll also get us at the Buff Geek Podcast blog at wordpress.com. Thanks for listening. Over to you, big man. Um, yes, as uh, David said, you can find us at the Buff Geek Podcast blog at wordpress.com. You can find myself at all social media at the Buff Geek. Um, as usual, we are sponsored by Alpha Fitness. Check the website at some point when David's fixed it for me because he's a champ. Yay, he's going to go pee now early while I'm doing the sign-off. Hashtag The Buff Geek Podcast. Ed screens are wank!